Hello everyone. In this video, we will explore about the classification of robots based on applications and based on kinematics, that is work volume. So first we will see what is uh, robotics. So robotics is about the science and practice of designing, using and programming robots for various tasks. These tasks can range from manufacturing and ex exploring harsh environments to help people and just having fun with robots. So the field of robotics brings together knowledge from many areas like engineering, computer science, biology and more. So when it comes to manufacturing, robots play a crucial role in reducing cost, improving productivity and ensuring high product quality. This automation can be uh, rigid or flexible with robotics being a prime example of flexible automation that adapts to different tasks. So next, uh, what are the interdisciplinary areas in uh, robotics? So we have uh, different fields working together. First is mechanical engineering. So this deals with how robots move, that is kinematics, and what forces they experience, that is dynamics. It's like understanding their physical abilities. Next is computer science. So it's all about planning about the robot's movements. So here comes the motion planning and making them smart. It is artificial intelligence to decide what to do. Next is electrical and electronics engineering. This handles how the robot is controlled, including the hardware that makes it work. And general sciences like physics and mathematics provide the foundation for understanding the physics law and doing the necessary calculations. Okay, so all of these areas collaborate to make a robots move, think and interact with the world. So next is uh, advantages of uh, robots. So using uh, robots and automation uh, has uh, will bring several advantages. That is, robots work tirelessly in places that are dangerous for humans like dark, hot or radioactive environments. They don't need light, air conditioning or brakes and they always maintain precision in this case. However, there are uh, challenges too. So replacing human jobs with uh, robots can lead to economic issues and require retraining. So robots can do multiple things at once, but they uh, lack the flexibility of human thinking. So while they offer many benefits, their use also raises important questions. Okay. So this is about the advantages of uh, robots and what are the challenges. Next is the cons of uh, robots. So these are incredibly efficient, but they have limitations. Okay. So they can't respond to unexpected emergencies unless they are specifically programmed for them. And safety measures are cru crucial to prevent harm to both humans and machines. Additionally, robots have certain areas where they fall short such as uh, creative thinking, quick decision making and they are uh, relatively high cost. Okay, so while they offer many advantages, there are important considerations to keep in mind when working with them. And next, so next is about the uh, robot uh, components. So it consists of several key parts that work together. Okay, so first is manipulator or the rover. So this is the robot's main body including its arms and joints. The manipulator alone is not a complete robot. Okay, understand this. And next is the end effector. So this is attached to the last joint. The end effector is like the robot's hand. It's responsible for handling objects and performing specific tasks. Next is the actuators. So these are what um, uh, what make the robots move. Okay. Think of them as the robot's muscles. They receive signals from the controller and control the joints and links. There are uh, different types of actuators like uh, motors and pneumatics. The controller is in charge of uh, these actuators. Next is about the sensors. So robots use uh, sensors to gather information about themselves and their surroundings. It's similar to how our bodies rely on uh, sensors like sight, touch and hearing. Okay, for instance, just as you know, when your arms and legs are even with your eyes closed, 
Robots have feedback sensors that tell their brains, that is the controllers, where each part of their body is. Okay? They also have special external sensors like vision systems and touch sensors to interact with and understand the world around them. Okay? So these sensors help robots navigate and perform tasks. Next is uh, about the controller and processes. So first is controller. So in a robot is similar to your body's cerebellum, which helps control your movements. It receives instructions from the robot's brain, that is the computer, manages the actions of the actuators. Okay, here are muscle-like components. And coordinates with sensory feedback. So for example, if a robot needs to move its first joint to a specific angle, the controller will still signals to the actuator to make it move and it will use the sensors to check if the joint has reached the desired angle next about the processor so it is like the robot's brain responsible for calculating how the robot's joint should move to reach a certain position and speed it's essentially a computer dedicated to controlling the robot okay complete with its own software and hardware in some cases, the controller and processor are uh, combined into one unit, while in others, they are separate. Okay, some robots come with the controller, but the user may need to provide their own processor in certain situations. Next is the software. So here, robots use three main types of software programs. Uh, first is the operating system which runs on the robot's processor. Second is the robotic software which calculates how each joint of the robot should move based on the robot's physical characteristics. And this information is then sent to the controller. This software comes in different levels of uh, complexity that is from low level machine language to more advanced languages used by modern robots. And the third group consists of application-specific routines and programs that are designed for a particular tasks such as assembling products, loading machines, moving materials, and performing mission-related functions. Okay. So first is the classification based on application. Then we will see the classification based on kinematics. Okay. So first, this is classification based on application. In the first is the industrial robots as you could see in the picture industrial robots are like uh, large mechanical arms used in factories to do repetitive tasks like uh, putting screws in place or checking the durability of parts okay they are typically designed to handle heavy objects and move them around in an industrial setting okay next the classification as domestic robots so these are the ones you use at home like uh, robotic vacuums or mops that help with cleaning some are designed for security like uh, surveillance robots and third classification is surgical robots so these are used by doctors for uh, remote uh, surgeries they have multiple cameras to provide a 3d view of the surgical area allowing doctors to perform operations with precision and fourth is the Robonuts. So these are robots uh, created by NASA. Uh, they are versatile, meaning they can be shaped like humans or not. They do various tasks like uh, collecting samples, examining uh, challenging terrains, taking photos and sending information back to Earth. These robots are essential for exploring locations too harsh for astronauts. Uh, next is commercial entertainment uh, robots. So these are designed for fun and can be bought for entertainment. Uh, they are created to be like companions and can do simple things like greeting, dancing, walking, and even mimic the behavior of uh, pets like dogs or cats. <coughs> so next is the army robot. Uh, these are used for defense uh, purposes and they include robots for tasks like bomb disposal, border surveillance and drones that capture images and uh, deliver uh, tactical weapons. Okay, An example is the Atlas robot made by Boston Dynamics. So these robots are typically not uh, sold to the public and are often used by security agencies, sometimes with a level of secrecy you could see in the picture. 
and next is the service robots uh, so these are used by universities and research teams to develop and showcase new features and technologies to the public they serve primarily for research and experimental purposes and sometimes they may become available for commercial use okay you could see in the picture as it is used in the research teams so those are the uh, classifications based on applications next we will see the classification based on kinematics okay so first classification is stationary robots in, in that you have a uh, different uh, uh, types so stationary robots are robotic arms that moves in various uh, waves okay and so different types of stationary robots are you can see here cartesian robots cylindrical robots spherical robots scara robots articulated robots and parallel robots so first what is cartesian robot so these move in xyz coordinates and they under rigid can be expensive to maintain okay next to cylindrical robots they have a rotation capability and move both angularly and linearly spherical robots work in a spherical system moving uh, by angularly and linearly Next is Scara robots. It is a selective compliance arm for robotic assembly with the two parallel revolute joints. Articulated robots have a three revolute joint to achieve rotary motion. Next, parallel robots. These are closed loop systems that uh, support a single platform uh, like uh, flight simulators. Okay, so these are uh, stationary robots. And next, we will see about uh, wheel robots and leg robots. Wheel robots are robots equipped with wheels. Okay, so different types are single wheel robots. So here, these uh, robots have just only one wheel. Two wheel robots equipped with two wheels, and uh, three and more wheel robots. Robot with uh, three are mon wheels. Okay. Next type is leg robots. They have they have articulated limbs and come with various uh, categories. Bipedal robots, that is humanoid robots. So uh, these robots are with two articulated limbs, tripedal robots with three articulated limbs, quadrupedal robots with four articulated limbs, hexapod robots, they have robots with six articulated limbs. Next is the swimming robots. So these are designed to move in uh, water and often uh, reassemble fish. So an example is the Sophie robot fish developed by MIT. And next is classification as flying robots. These can fly in the air and drones are a common example of this category. Okay, you could see in the picture fish robot and flying robot. So these are about the uh, classifications of robots based on application and classifications of robots based on work volume. Okay. Thank you.